Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I want to talk about torque. Our objectives include calculating the torque on a rigid object and applying conditions of equilibrium to analyze a rigid object under the influence of a variety of forces. So to start off, let's talk about torque, which is a vector. The Greek letter tau is used to symbolize it, and torque is a force that causes an object to turn. Now in order for it to cause for a force to cause a torque, it must be the force must be perpendicular to the displacement and therefore causing a rotation. Now the further away the force is applied from the point of rotation, the more leverage you obtain. So this distance is known as the lever arm or R. So down here you see a picture of a wrench. If we're rotating about this point here on the left and we're applying a force over here, the distance from the point we're rotating about to where the force is applied, that R is the lever arm. Now the force is applied at an angle compared to this what we call line of action, so that angle there we'll call theta. Now as we talk about this then, torque vector is equal to the R vector, the position vector from the point of rotation to that force, the lever arm, crossed with the force that's applied. And this is a cross product or vector product. And we'll focus instead on its magnitude to say the magnitude of the torque vector is R times F times the sine of that angle theta. And we'll get the direction later on from this right hand rule. So torque is a force that causes an object to turn. Now the direction of the torque vector again is perpendicular to both the position vector and the force vector, one of those counterintuitive sorts of things. And we're going to use the right hand rule to find the positive direction. For example, if we have an R vector in this direction and a force vector in this direction, we're going to use our right hand rule, take the fingers of your right hand, point them in the direction of the R vector, and then bend them in in the direction of the force vector. Your thumb then will point in the direction of the force that is applied, or that your thumb will point in the direction of the torque vector, I should say. Now, positive torques cause counterclockwise rotation, and negative torques cause clockwise rotations. So in this case, if we have R cross F, point the fingers of your right hand in the direction of R, bend them in the direction of F, and you should see that your thumb points into the screen. So that would be the direction of the torque vector. Now, as we talk about translational versus rotational variables, we've got quite a few different analogs. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration. In the rotational world, net torque is equal to I, known as the moment of inertia, where the moment of inertia is the rotational analog of mass. How difficult it is to spin something about an axis times the angular acceleration. So force has the rotational analog of torque. Mass has the an has the rotational analog of moment of inertia, capital I. Acceleration vector has the rotational analog of angular acceleration. We have oops, displacement, delta x, has the analog equivalent of delta theta. And velocity has the rotational analog of angular velocity. So really, we're just looking at the same basic physics, but applied to a rotational world. Now, as we talk about equilibrium, we're going to talk about three types. Static equilibrium implies that the net force and the net torque are zero, and the system is at rest. Dynamic equilibrium implies that the net force and the net torque are zero, and the system is moving at constant translational and rotational velocity. Rotational equilibrium implies that the net torque on an object is zero, so it's going to continue in its current state of angular velocity, whatever that happens to be. So let's take a look at some examples. Here we have a pirate captain taking the helm and turning the wheel of her ship by applying a force of 20 newtons to a wheel spoke. If she applies the force at a radius of 0.2 meters from the axis of rotation and an angle of 80 degrees to the line of action, what torque does she apply to the wheel? Well, let's start by writing our magnitude of the torque vector equation, fr sine theta, where our force here is 20 newtons our position vector r, the distance over which it's applied, the lever arm, is 0.2 meters sine 80 degrees. I put that into my calculator and I come up with a torque of about 3.94 newton 
meters. Looking at our next problem, a mechanic tightens the lugs on a tire by applying a torque of 100 newton meters at an angle of 90 degrees to the line of action. What force is applied if the wrench is 0 0.4 meters long? Well, torque is FR sine theta, which implies then that the force must be equal to torque over R sine theta, which is going to be 100 newton meters divided by 0 0.4 meters, our lever arm times the sine of 90 degrees, and sine of 90 degrees is 1, so that's just 100 over 0.4, or 250 newtons. How long must the wrench be if the mechanic is only capable of applying a force of 200 newtons? Well, we'll start with our same equation, torque equals FR sine theta, but now we need to know what the lever arm is going to be given the torque and the force. If our torque is going to be 100 newton meters, our maximum force is 200 newtons times the sine of 90 degrees, which is 1 again, 100 over 200, that's just going to be half a meter. So our wrench has to be just a little bit longer. That's a pretty big wrench. All right, signpost problem. A three kilogram cafe sign is hung from a one kilogram horizontal pole as shown in the diagram. A wire is attached to prevent the sign from rotating. Find the tension in the wire. Well, first I'm gonna make a diagram of our pole here, realizing that it's going to rotate about that leftmost point over there, and then take a look at the forces we have on it. We have the tension in the wire T. We have the mass of the uh, pole, which is going to be one kilogram times the uh, acceleration due to gravity. The force will be mg, its weight. So that's in the middle of the pole, and that's going to be one kilogram times g, 10 meters per second squared, which is 10 newtons. And we also have this three kilogram weight that's acting over here. So that'll be three times g, or which 30 newtons. Now, I know that my net torque here must be zero. It's not rotating. Therefore, let's write up the sum of all the torques. We have T sine 30 degrees times the distance, the lever arm, four meters. So that will be T sine 30 degrees counterclockwise. So that's positive times four. We have these two that are causing clockwise rotations, clockwise torque, so those will be negative. So minus, let's do this one first. The force is 3g, operating at a distance of three meters, a lever arm of three. And we have the pole itself, the weight of the pole, which is 1g, operating at a lever arm of two meters. So that'll be minus 1g times two, and that must all equal zero. So solving for the tension, that's going to be, well, we've got negative 11g on the other side. That'll be 11g, or 11 times 10 meters per second squared, over 4 sine 30 degrees. So that'd be 11 times 10, or 110 newtons, over 4 sine 30. That's just going to be 2 meters. Or pardon me. That'll be 2. So we will get 55 newtons as our force as our tension in the wire. All right, let's take a look at one more. 45 kilogram Marissa sits on a teeter-totter one meter from the fulcrum. Where must 75 kilogram Katrina on the right sit in order to maintain static equilibrium? And what is the force on the fulcrum? Well, first thing we have to do is we have to assume that the uh, teeter-totter is massless since it doesn't give us the mass of the teeter-totter. And let's draw a little diagram here. There's our teeter-totter. We've got a fulcrum there. And we have Marissa over here on the left-hand side with a force of 45 times g, 45 kilograms times g. And that's at a lever arm of one meter. And over here on the right, we have Marissa with a force of 75 g at some distance x from the fulcrum. And if we are in static equilibrium, the net torque must be zero. So net torque equals zero.
but the net torque, we're going to have 45 G operating at a lever arm of one meter minus 75 G operating at some lever arm X equal to zero. So now let's just solve this for X. That means that 45 G minus 75 G X equals zero or X is going to be equal to 45 G over 75 G which is just 0 0.6 meters. So Katrina must sit 0.6 meters from the fulcrum to be in static equilibrium. And what's the force on the fulcrum? Well, we can go to Newton's second law there. Net force, which is equal to mass times acceleration, must be equal to zero. So our force is down. We have 45 G from Marissa and we have 75 G from Katrina and pointing up we have the force of the fulcrum. So the force of the fulcrum is just going to be 120 G or 120 times 10 meters per second squared which is 1200 newtons. Alright, hopefully that gets you a good start with torque. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks everyone and make it a great day.